Hello brothers and sisters of Christ. I wanted to do this uh, prayer request video outside, but there's a lot of uh, people doing yard work in the area and the noise might affect the mic on here because this camera that the brethren helped me buy has an amazing mic. That's why I don't have to use a lapel mic that much and everything. And the wind was picking up, which is a good thing. The wind's picking up. But it's a beautiful day outside. I wanted to be outside, but we're inside today. Okay? We're going to do our prayer request video. Now, brothers and sisters in Christ, I've always said this. Make sure you're praying with uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.17. Pray without ceasing. Okay? Make sure you're praying with, to God for everything. And we're going to go over some prayer requests that I have for the body of Christ as a whole. And then we're going to go through some prayer requests that I have that's personal. Okay? And one of the things I've always said, brothers and sisters in Christ, as you pray is before you ask anybody for a prayer request, oh, please pray for me. That's a good thing. It is a good thing. But before you ask me, before you ask anyone else, I always say put your prayer requests in the comment section underneath this video. Before you do that, make sure you are taking it to God yourself first in prayer. That personal relationship. It starts at salvation when you confess both in prayer and ask God to save you. That's when your prayer life starts. You need to go to the Lord yourself first and then come to us and ask for prayer requests. So I've talked to the Lord about the things that I'm going to be talking to you about. I've talked to the Lord. The, my concerns about the body of Christ as a whole and my concerns about me personally. Little things in my life that I, I, I go to God and say, Lord, I need help with this. Lord, I need help with that. When you make your requests known, your needs, your wants before the Lord... Okay. Philippians 4, 6 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Okay. I have, I've gone to God first. Make sure you go to God first. Then you go to the body of Christ saying, Lord, pray for me. Lord, I don't Lord. Lord, you go to Lord first. Then you go to the body of Christ and say, Brethren, pray for me. Pray for me. Okay. Uh, one of the things we pray for is also wisdom. James 1.5, okay. in your King James Bibles, God's perfect written word in English, James 1.5, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally, and it not, and it shall be given him. I'm asking God all the time when I'm reading the word of God. Uh, I was going to be standing outside, so I didn't have, a, have my Bible on me. But my Bible's over there, usually over there on the nightstand, but now it's in the other room because I'm putting together another Bible study for us, brothers and Christ. Um... But brothers and Christ, make sure that you're praying for wisdom, that God will open the scriptures to you, that God will show you the right way. There's times you pray for God saying, in my life as a whole, Lord, it, there's many different directions you can go in your life that's not sinful and wicked, but it might not be the direction God wants for you. Well, how do you know what direction God wants for you? You pray. You pray and you ask God, Lord, help me, guide me, show me the wisdom of what direction you want me going in. Lord, open the scriptures to me. Help me to hide God's Bible says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Jesus said, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. He talks about sending the comforter that will guide you into all truth. But we're to pray to God, Hey, Lord, please help me hide God's word in my heart. And I don't want to go off too much of all these other teachings, but brothers and sisters Christ, what does it mean to hide God's word in your heart? To live it. He didn't say, hey, thy word have I memorized. Thy word I, I read a little bit today. Reading the Bible is good. I'm pointing over to my nightstand where I read every morning, every night, before bed. Okay? Reading the Bible is good, and you should be doing that. Memorizing scripture is great, and you should be doing that. But I've always taught, because the Bible teaches this, if you don't hide it in your heart, which means living it, if you're not hiding it in your heart and living it, reading the Bible is pointless. Memorizing scripture is pointless if you're not applying it to your heart and living it and being a living testimony to this dark, wicked world. Okay, leading people to Christ with the life that you're living for Him. And but it all starts at praying for wisdom. Lord, open the scriptures to me. Lord, please open the scriptures to me. Uh -huh. Lord, show me what you want for me in my life. The other thing we pray for, John 17, 15. John 17, 15. 
is, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that, they, that thou should keep them from evil. We're supposed to pray for the protection of the body of Christ. Protection from their own wicked flesh, that they stand strong and keep standing in a standing position, don't become fallen flat on their face. We're to pray for protection from the world. Okay. Make sure you're doing that, brother, sister Christ, that you're praying that, uh, that thou shouldst keep them from evil, that God keeps the brethren from evil. And I'm telling you right now, anytime I fell into the abstain from all appearance of evil, when I let evil in my presence, notice I said I let, it's my fault. Oftentimes, God will let us go through hard times for these reasons. Uh, correction, chastisement, to keep us humble, keep us humble. And keep, and I guess the third one, the second one, that go together to keep us humble and to keep our eyes on Him, to keep us saying, "Hey, we need You, Lord. I need Your Word in my heart more and more. I need to look to You more and more. I need to pray more. I need to, I need to sanctify my life more. I need to help the brethren more. I need to get out there and witness more. He'll humble you." So the two reasons, ultimately, that bad things happen to us, uh, is, bad things, is to chastisement and to humble us and keep our eyes on Jesus Christ, which I'm getting ahead of myself in one of my prayer requests for the body of Christ as a whole. Okay? But to keep us from evil, we're supposed to be praying for each other. Lord, keep the wicked world off our backs so we can continue doing your work until the catching away of the body of Christ. Right? That's what we're supposed to be praying for. Romans 1 9 we read, For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. Brother Sister Christ, every day are you praying for the brethren? Yes, pray for yourself. Yes, like I said, go to God first and talk to him about you, about your walk with the Lord. But somewhere in that prayer you should always try to throw in the body of Christ as a whole. Are you praying for the brethren as a whole? Are you praying for other brethren specifically? Right. Paul says, without, he makes mention of you, without ceasing, I make mention of you always in my prayers. Remember we just read in 1 Thessalonians 5.17, pray without ceasing. So every time Paul's praying to God about his work, his walk with the Lord, and the ministry and everything, he's always bringing up the brethren. Lord, not me only, but help the brethren. Lord, I need food. But not me only. Make sure, Lord, please make sure all the brethren have food. Lord, this clothes is falling apart. I need a new change of raiments. But you know what, Lord? Please, I pray that you're clothing all the brethren, that the brethren have clothes also. Lord, thank you for this roof over my head, especially here during the winter when it's raining. And thank you, Lord, for this roof that's over my head. And while I'm at it, Lord, can I pray that the brethren, Lord, that you're watching over the brethren, that the brethren have places to stay warm, and places to stay dry, roofs over their head, O oh Lord. Lord, I'm having this problem in my life. But you know what, Lord? Other brethren might be having the same problem I am. As you're helping me, Lord, please help them. Please watch over them. You see how that works? Are you throwing the brethren in the prayers that you pray? Or is it all me, myself, and I? Me, myself, and I. There's nothing wrong with praying to God about you. But you should always throw in a prayer for the brethren. With everything, brothers and sisters Christ. Okay? Romans 10.1 we read, Brethren, my heart's desire of prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Now this one, I tend to, I go wild and I go, Lord, when's the last time I even thought of Israel? When's the last time I thought of the Jewish people? When's the last time I prayed for the peace of Jerusalem? I always throw that in there, brothers and sisters Christ. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They're wicked, wicked people. But more than anything, I pray that, Lord, that some might get saved before the catching away of the body of Christ. Peace of Jerusalem, but that some of the Jews, some have, that Jews will get saved. Okay. I always throw that in there. Okay. So first, what we're going to start out with is... Oops, I'll fold this over, right? Some of my prayer requests to the body of Christ as a whole. Almost like a little mini Bible study, but prayers for the body of Christ as a whole. If you hear some noises, Victoria, my miniature schnauzer, is walking on the wood floor. Okay. I forgot to put her up on the bed, that way she can't go nowhere. Um, but brothers and sisters in Christ, pray for the brethren in the falling away. 
We read why we pray. One of the things is we pray for the brethren, that wickedness doesn't come to them. We pray for the brethren, you know, as a whole. But one of the things we desperately need to be praying for in these last days, brothers and sisters, not for me personally, but for the body of Christ as a whole, which includes me, but for the body of Christ as a whole, that we pray for the brethren that in the falling away that, that uh, God keeps them in a standing position, that they keep their eyes on Jesus Christ. Because right now their brethren falling away and they're motivating the brethren to take their eyes off Jesus Christ and put it on the world. Get them fear-mongering about what's going on in the world. Oh yeah. Uh, Psalms 12.1. Psalms 12.1. Help, Lord. Help, Lord. It's prayer. Help, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth, for the faithful fail from among the children of men. Help, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth. People are stopped doing things God's way. The brethren are starting to, like I said, I believe the body of Christ in these last days is not in a good condition. And that's not me being negative. I'm always looking at myself first. Brother says Christ, when you go to correct a brother in Christ, I've always said this, the first thing you do before you ever dare correct somebody else is look at this person right here. Not me, I'm talking about the individual, yourself. You need to reflect through the Word of God in your heart and say, Lord, where do I need help? Where do I need correction? Do I have the same problem as that person has? Am I going to be considered a hypocrite? And some brethren are. When they go to correct people, they turn out to be hypocrites. Why? Because they've got the same problem. You, can have, you could have had the same problem in the past and correct them, absolutely. But I'm talking about present tense. First person you always look at is yourself. But brothers and sisters in Christ, the body of Christ as a whole is hurting. And I believe the number one reason is, is today, today you have brethren that are turning their back on that blessed hope. They're not looking present tense for the blessed hope. And I was just listening to, I think it's Isaiah, the book before Daniel. And he's talking about that with their mouth, they're saying one thing, but with their actions, they're saying something differently. You have people who claim, I still believe in the pre-time of Jacob's trouble, catching away of the body of Christ. With their lips, but with their actions, they believe in the post, they're pushing post and mid-trib. They're not telling you to keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. They're telling you to keep your eyes on the world, and you need to be prepping, and you need to try to endure to the end. And what happens when you take your eyes off Jesus Christ? Let's look at this. Okay. First, let's look at 2 Corinthians 9.11. you got your King James Bibles out. 2 Corinthians 9.11. What is this? I say this a lot. Looking for that blessed hope. For those who don't know, looking for that blessed hope. For, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men. Okay? Everyone's without excuse. Anybody who doesn't get saved today before they catch away the body of Christ, they're without excuse. They could have, but they chose not to. Teaching us, saved sinners, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. There's no period there. But I'm stopping for a second to say, hey, that's the changed life. You have a lot of false converts out there that they don't want the changed life. They don't want to live godly. We just read in Psalms 12.1, the godly man seeth us. You have some brethren that started out, they got the changed life, they're trying to live godly, and they start going back to the way of the world. They start becoming part of the falling away. But we're supposed to be denying ungodliness and worldly lust. We're supposed to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. What does that mean? Verse 13, looking for that blessed hope. That's what it means to look for that blessed hope. And the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's why we're going through a series of studies. Are you looking? And it has to do with the life that you're living. And we're going through a lot of the doctrines right now that you apply them to your life. They do affect how you live your life. Right now we're doing uh, dispensations. We have to realize that the disp dispensation that we are in... We can learn from other dispensations, instruction and righteousness. We can see how there's nothing new under the sun. How a lot of things overlap. There's nothing new under the sun. But how you find God's grace is differently. Okay. How you find it. Verse 14. 
who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. Living a life of Christ, when you're walking with Christ, that's an action. When you're living a godly life, that shows that you keep, you're keeping your eyes on Jesus Christ. That you're looking for that blessed hope. These things speak and exhort and rebuke those who have turned their back on the imminent return of Jesus Christ, looking for that present tense, present tense, looking for that blessed hope. Rebuke them with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Mm -hmm. Now, Brother Chuck, looking for that blessed hope. We're supposed to be praying for the body of Christ as a whole that we stay in a standing position and keep living for God and being a light for God. I've always said this, brothers of Christ, you can be a verbal witness or you, and you're supposed to be a living witness. Your actions, how you live your life, how you talk, how you live your life. You say, what do you mean by how you talk? Do you give God thanks in all things? Do you give God the glory? You know what I'm noticing online with ministries that used to be Bible-believing? They were at one time Bible-believing, God-fearing ministries. You know what they're doing now? They're taking all the glory for themselves. They're no longer giving God the glory. You're supposed to be a living witness. It starts with the, the heart and it comes out the mouth. And it always reflects. The truth will always come out eventually. Some people can lie with the mouth. But the truth will always come out. But are you giving God thanks in all things where other people see it? Not putting on a show. You thank Him all the time and you get that attitude that I'm thanking Him all the time. That even when you're in public, you're thanking Him. You don't go, oh, there's people around so I really can't give God thanks out loud. I'll do it really, really quietly. And, um, you know, maybe I'll just, I'll get to thanking Him when I get home when it's just you and me, Lord. No, you thank Him all the time, no matter where you are. You give Him thanks. You give him glory in all things. I did this and I did that. Is that what you're becoming, brother and sister Christ? One of those people. Are you saying, praise God that he did this for me? Praise God that he allowed this to happen in my life. Praise God for giving me the strength to do his will. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. That's how we're supposed to be, brother and sister Christ. That's how we're supposed to be. But we're also supposed to be not just a verbal witness, like witnessing the gospel, but we're supposed to be a living witness. The changed life, being separate from this world. And they come to you and say, well, why aren't you doing that? Well, why aren't you doing that? Because God says that's a sin. Not my morals say that's a sin. Not uh, my opinions and my feelings say that that's wrong. And, and you can have your feelings and opinions over there. That's the biggest thing here in America, is that the freedom means that you can live however you want over there, wicked, wicked sin, and you have your rights, and I have my... No, that's wickedness, that's sin, because God says so. And that needs to be our attitude, brothers and Christ. But you can be a living witness with the life you live. Why won't you get drunk? Because God says drunkenness is a sin. Why won't you get into smoking and, and weed and, and drugs and stuff? Because my body is a temple for the Holy Ghost and God says that is a sin. My body is supposed to be without blemish. It's a command of God. That is a sin. Uh, why don't you just hang out with a lot of these Beautiful women for the guys, and beautiful men for the women, handsome men. Beautiful women, handsome men. Uh, God says fornication is a sin. Adultery is a sin. And you can go down through all the list. Why don't I do that stuff? Because God says it's wrong, and sin is what's sending mankind to hell. With your life, and then it comes out verbally. They see something about you that's different. Why aren't you living this way like the world? Why aren't you looking like the world? Why aren't you talking like the world? Why aren't you acting like the world? Because I'm set apart. God saved me and I'm going to heaven when I die. Before he saved me, I was on my way to hell. I was just like you. I'm on my way to hell talking about the lost world. I point at the camera like I'm talking to my brother Jesus Christ, but I'm talking about the world. You see what I'm saying? You can be a living witness for Jesus Christ. You need that changed life. And only God can give it through true salvation. After salvation, after God saves you. Amen. But we said, you can be a verbal witness, you can be a physical, a living witness. You're supposed to be both. Lately, it just seems a lot of people out there, professing Christians, 
uh, false religions, they're all talk. They're all talk. They still look like the world. They still act like the world. They still laugh at the world's jokes. They're, pred they're predominantly just all talk. We're not supposed to be all talk. Whether, the Bible says whether in word or in deed, do all to the glory of God. We're not supposed to be just talk. We're supposed to be walk. Okay. You ever heard that saying, put your money where your mouth is? That whole old saying and everything? You're just all talk. You're just all talk. You're not supposed to be all talk. You're supposed to be walk, brothers and sisters Christ. But today it seems like we're doing a lot of talk online. But my prayer for the brethren right here is your life as a Christian. We need to be praying for everybody that we stay in that standing position. We keep our eyes on Jesus Christ and we keep living for him. And not start falling back in and being pressured by this wicked world. Fear mongers. Okay? Showing us everything that's going on in the world and how wicked the world is and showing us all these bad things. That's fear mongers. Mm -hmm. We're not supposed to let, we're not given a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Power to overcome this wicked world with the life that we're living. But that power isn't mine. I can do all things through Christ with strength. And my power comes from Jesus Christ and His Word hiding it in my heart. It's not my power, it's not my strength. It's His. He gives it to us to overcome this world and be separate from this world. You got a lot of fakes and frauds out there that you look at them, it's like, you're no different from the world. And they claim they are Christians. I'm praying for the ones that are actually truly saved, that you don't go the way of the world. I'm seeing more and more brethren go the way of the world. Oh, maybe it's not that big of a deal. Oh, come on, sin's not that big of a deal. Or I can decide all of a sudden this could be okay when the Bible says it isn't. Or that's okay now because the Bible... Well, this is the direction the world's going in. Well, the world's falling apart, and this I have to compromise in order to survive. I can't trust the Lord. I have to trust my own hands, my own strength. You see where that leads? You're taking your eyes off Jesus Christ. So, brothers and Christ, we need to pray hardcore that people keep their eyes on Jesus Christ. And I've got a one man with two examples of what happens when you take your eyes off Jesus Christ and put it on the world. And you start caring more about what the world thinks than what God thinks. Okay. Turn to Matthew 14.24. Some of the brethren know this story. Turn to Matthew 14.24. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went, in, went unto them, walking on the sea. We did a Bible study, saw a courageous man and foolish man, Peter. And we did a, a story, God gave me a, a teaching to put out, talking about this. And we go into more detail. Jesus is walking on the sea, and when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. Remember what Jesus said when he came back to present himself after the resurrection? A spirit hath not flesh and bones. They think it's just a spirit. And they cried out for fear. We're not given a spirit of fear. What happens when you start getting fearful? You start panicking. You don't start thinking straight. You don't start thinking using the heart. Your flesh takes over and becomes fleshly. They get there out of fear. They cried out for fear, fear, fear. Now we're supposed to fear God. Absolutely. Fall flat on our face before our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is King of kings and Lord of lords. But I'm talking about the world. Being afraid of the world. That's what I'm talking about. When you start getting fearful of the world, you start, fear, you start taking your eyes off Jesus Christ and putting it on the world. You put it on what you're afraid of. Do you fear God? Then that's where your eyes should be. If you fear the world, that's where your eyes are going to be. They started getting very fearful. They thought it was a spirit. World, the world. 27. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. So when he, I, I teach this. When he got out on the ship, he had his eyes on Jesus Christ. He got out. He was walking on water like Jesus Christ was. But he had his eyes on Jesus Christ. Now what happened when he took his eyes off Jesus Christ and looked at the world? This world's falling apart. There's bad things going on in the world. This world is just corrupt as can be. We're really close to the catching away of the body of Christ, brothers and sisters of Christ. 
But if you take your eyes off Jesus Christ and you get onto the world, what's going to happen? But when he saw the wind bolstering, you see the wars and rumors of wars. Do you see the economic collapse? There's a worldwide economic collapse coming, and I believe it'll happen in the time of Jacob's trouble. Uh, there's going to be a worldwide famine, not just a famine here or a famine there. There's a worldwide famine that's being engineered that I believe is going to happen in the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay. We see these things, but they're supposed to strengthen us to keep our eyes on Jesus Christ. Okay, the world's falling apart. You said it's going to fall apart, Lord. We need to get busy for you. You could come back any day now. I need to get busy with my sanctification, living, uh, letting, you, letting the Lord clean up my life. I need to get busy with witnessing, gospel tracting. I need to get busy studying the Word of God and hiding it in my heart and living it. He could come back any day now. How do you want him to come back and find you? That's the whole point of every once in a while seeing what's going on in the world. And the Bible says, hey, this is going to happen. It's supposed to motivate us to keep our eyes on Jesus Christ. But lately, there's some ministries that just promote predominantly, just look at the world, look at the world, look at the world, not Jesus Christ. And it's a distraction. Some people get feared. I get some families hitting me up with fear-mongering. This is going to happen. You need to do this. And that's going to happen. And you need to do that. I went and bought some gasoline and <laughs> put it in the, in the shed I have outside because it's so important. That gasoline's been sitting there. Could it get hard? Gas could, could get expensive? It could. But my point is, is I got that out of fear, not out of, of saying, okay, I might be seeing something going on. I'll go ahead and grab it. But you know what? I trust the Lord. Whatever happens, I trust the Lord. Okay. I went ahead and bought some, yeah, but I trust the Lord. I actually went and got it out of fear. And then later got corrected by the Lord saying, you don't trust me? Yeah, it, my, my motivation behind getting it was wrong. There's nothing wrong with grabbing it. I've got, like I said, I've got food for, uh, that would supply me for six months to a year. Okay. I'm not prepping for seven years because I'm not going through the time of Jacob's trouble. Anybody tells you you need to be prepping for like two to three or four or five years of hard time, you're dealing with someone whose heart believes they're going to go through the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay. But he saw the wind bolstering. He took his eyes off Jesus, looked at the world, and the world was scary. And when you take your eyes off the Lord, you put it on the world, and you start fearing the world, what happens? He was afraid. And he began and, and beginning to sink, sink into the world. And I see brethren do this. They're becoming part of the falling away. They're starting to go the way of the world. They're starting to justify the flesh. Culture, heritage, uh, covetousness with idolatry, doing things the world's way. And I'm going to throw this out there. Backbiting, whispering, name-calling, mocking, bearing false witness, drama, causing division. Why? Because that's the world's way. They're looking at the world. They're not looking at Jesus Christ. They're, getting this, they're letting this flesh get the better of them. That's why we're supposed to pray for it, that God will keep them from evil. That God will watch over you and correct you and keep you from evil. And if you fall, stumble and fall, that God will chastise you and pick you back up. Maybe God won't have to chastise you. Maybe you'll have a brother in Christ come and correct you. And that conviction, you'll get rid of it ASAP before there's chastisement. You'll repent, forsake, and get back to your walk with the Lord before the chastisement comes. But he looked at the world, and by looking at the world, what happened? He started sinking into the world. Brother says, Christ, I'm seeing it all the time. Brethren are getting so distracted by what's going on in the world that they're starting to go the direction of the world. They're starting to look like the world. They're starting to act like the world, doing things the world's way. We've mentioned this before, Brother says, Christ, a plane. When I'm driving, I'll just do driving, my truck. There's the ocean. I've mentioned this before. There's the ocean on the highway on the one side. And there was one time that I was driving, and I hadn't seen the ocean for a while because we get a lot of fog sometimes, and I don't get to go to town as much as I used to. Gas prices are getting expensive. But I try to make it into town once, uh, every, once a week, once every two weeks, I mainly to go to the farmer's market, get fresh food, and support my local farmer's market, the locally grown food. But as I'm driving on the road, I look off to the left, Brother Says Christ, and I saw the ocean, 
and the sun was just shining off it. It was just the right angle that I call it the silver. God blesses me with so much gold and silver in my life. I get the gold in the evenings when the sun gets to the horizon, especially if the clouds are, in, there's a little thin layer of clouds at the horizon, and then a gap, and then the horizon. So it's just above the horizon there's a gap. And then there's some clouds, so when the moon or the sun gets between the clouds and the horizon, it really does that gold, that orange hue over the trees, over the house. I get gold. But I also have a view of the ocean that it really has to be... A, I see a little bit of the ocean, but mainly I get that dust, that dirty dust, because if there's no moisture in the air, all the dirt that's in the air is what you see when it's a hot day. But during the winter, there's enough moisture in the air because we have a lot of rains and everything that it's clear enough that when the sun, but between noon and 2 o'clock, only during the winter, noon and 2 o'clock, it shines off the water and it gives that silvery shine to it. And I call it my silver. It's a blessing from the Lord. When I was driving on the road, getting back to the story, when I was driving on the road and I was looking off to the left, I could see the silver. And it was so beautiful. And I, go to, I started looking over there. And I'm not, it's not a big look, I'm, I was just driving, I was just barely looking. It wasn't a huge, like I was trying to look behind me or something. I'm driving straight, and I look over like this, and it must have been 15 seconds, 10 seconds, and the truck started going over that direction. And I was like, oh, oh, I gotta, get, I gotta keep my eyes on the road, I, Lord, I gotta keep my eyes on the road, thank you, Lord, there's no other cars around, thank you, Lord, I gotta keep my eyes on the road. But what happened? Where you're looking is where you tend to steer. Some people use that example with a plane. But the best example is to use with... Uh, I'm not the only one that's had that experience, Brother Says Christ. I know a lot of you two have out there. When you're driving, you see something that just it sticks out and it's weird. and It catches your attention. Or you see something very beautiful. All right? And you go to look. And next thing you know, you're slowly pulling out of that lane. You're not going straight. What happens when you take your eyes off Jesus Christ? What happened when Paul took his eyes off Jesus Christ? He began to sink into the world. What happens when brethren take their eyes off Jesus Christ? They turn their back on the imminent return of Jesus Christ, looking, present tense, for that blessed hope with the life that you're living. Keeping your eyes on Jesus Christ all the time. What happens? I'll tell you what happened. In my life, when I've taken my eyes off Jesus Christ, the flesh started to get in the better of me. The world, you start fearing the world. You start worrying about the world and what the world thinks, which we'll get into the second example. But he beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Brother says, Christ, I'm here to tell you right now, I'm just not here to scold all those that have fallen and all those that have taken their eyes off Jesus Christ. Brother says, we're to pray for them, to not take their eyes off Jesus Christ. But my second part of this prayer request for the whole brethren we need to be praying that if they take their eyes off Jesus Christ, if they've come, they're in a fallen state, that the Lord wakes them up and they turn back to Jesus Christ. Lord, save me! And get me back up on a standing position. Get me back to going straight. I start turning to the left on that road on the highway. Oh Lord, I'm sorry. And I pull back and start looking straight. Lord, I'm sorry, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for saving me, Lord. I need to keep my eyes, I need to stay focused. Lord, save me. Brother says, Christ, make sure you're praying that someone keeps the, that we keep our eyes on Jesus Christ as the body of Christ. You first. I always pray for me first. Lord, help me keep my eyes on, Jesus, on you, O oh Lord. And then I pray for the body of Christ. And while I'm at it, Lord, the whole body of Christ, Lord, help us all to keep our eyes on you. And if, and if we start to sink into this world, we've lost sight of you, O oh Lord. We start getting into sin and wickedness. Coaches, which is idolatry. We start to get in and fall into a trap of fear-mongering. Lord, help them to cry out to you, to pick them back up. And what happens here? 31, And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hands and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore did thou doubt? And when they were coming to the ship, the wind ceased. When we get caught up, we won't have to deal with this world anymore. All right. But until then, we're supposed to be fighting the good fight. If you haven't seen those series we did on putting on the whole armor of God, uh, well, there's still some pieces of armor we haven't come across, we haven't done yet. 
but put on the whole armor of God. The whole armor of God. So we can fight this, this body of flesh, and we can fight this wicked world spiritually. So where we see an example of someone who takes their eyes off Jesus Christ. Here's another one that people don't really realize that much. Turn to Luke 22, 54. How many times have you heard the story of Peter and the, the crows, the roosters are crowing, and, and he denies Jesus? But one thing people don't realize is this. Let's go through it. Luke 22, 54. Then took they him and led him and brought him into the high priest's house, and Peter followed afar off. He was following Jesus. He was looking at Jesus. What's happening to Jesus? He had his eyes on Jesus. He's following. Verse 55, And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and were set down together, Peter sat down among them. Who's the them? The world. But a certain maid beheld him and sat by the fire and earnestly looked upon him and said, This man was also with him. And he denied him, saying, Woman, I know him not. Pleasing the world. He took his eyes off Jesus Christ. He wasn't looking at Jesus Christ at that point. He was cleaning by the fire, warming himself by the fire, hanging out with the world. And when the world started getting on to him, ooh, what did he do? He caved in. He caved in. He fell. Verse 58, And after a little while another saw him and said, Thou art also of them. And Peter said, Man, I know him not. Verse 59, And about the space of one hour after another confidently, confidentially affirmed, saying of a truth, this fellow also was with him. For he is a Galilean. In other words, his speech berayeth him. We always talk about this. He's talking like a saved man. a man. He's talking like a man that's been with Jesus Christ. I understand that he didn't get saved until after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But at that time period, he, he repented, for, uh, was baptized, repented for the remission of sins. He believed Jesus Christ is God Almighty. He's her king to bring in the uh, day of the Lord. But he spoke as a man that was with Jesus, that walked with Jesus. How's your walk with Jesus? Do you speak like a man that walks with Jesus? Verse 60, or do you talk like the world? Verse 60, and Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately, while he yet spake, the cock crew. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. People say, well, it doesn't say Peter, look, come on. The Lord looked at Peter, and Peter looked over at the Lord. He took his eyes off the people that were around him, the world, and he looked over and saw the Lord look at him. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. Brother says, Christ, how many times have we failed the Lord and fall flat on our face because we took our eyes off Jesus Christ and put it on the world, put it on the flesh? How many of us cried bitterly? If you're too ashamed to say it, I'll say it. I have. I've fallen on my knees before the Lord and wept bitterly at my failings. The Bible says we confess our faults one to another. When I fail the Lord... But there's this Christ. But what do we see here? And a good example of Paul or Peter getting distracted by the world and looking at the world and then starting to care about what the world thinks and not what Jesus Christ thinks. Not what God thinks. But there's this Christ. One of the biggest prayer requests, I didn't mean for this to turn into a huge Bible study, but for the greatest prayer request that I have for the brethren as a whole is we need to pray that the brethren keep their eyes on Jesus Christ. Hiding God's word in their heart and living it and keeping their eyes on that blessed hope. Looking for that blessed hope. Keep their eyes on Jesus Christ. His commands, which is through His perfect written word. What He wants. What pleases Him. We're doing this, a study on this right now. For thy pleasure, they are and were created. Talking about mankind and Jesus Christ created them. And for His pleasure, we are and were created. What pleases God? 
Fear God, keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. What happens when you stop fearing God and you start fearing the world? You start fear, fearing in the flesh. You take your eyes off Jesus Christ and you put it on the world. What happens? You start doing things the world's way. You start going like that truck, like my car is a truck. Like my truck, when I started looking at the ocean, it started going towards the ocean. It started going to where I was looking. Are you looking at Jesus Christ? Are you more worried about pleasing Him than the world? When He calls us home, do you want Him looking at you going, Well done, thou good and faithful one? Or do you want Him looking at you going, Here's your penny. Next. Move along. Next. You got in by the skin of your teeth? As they say. And you want him looking at you going, Well done, thou good and faithful one. Some brethren have turned their back on the imminent return of Jesus Christ, and they need to repent. And they need to get back to looking to for Jesus Christ every day with the life that they're living, looking for that blessed hope. They need to get their eyes back on Jesus Christ that they took it off of. And they know who they are. And you know who you are, brothers of Christ, who have done that. Brothers of Christ, we need to be praying for them. And I'm praying for them. And I'm praying for everyone. That you stay in a standing position. Today it is so hard, brothers of Christ. The flesh is just... The only place, I told you, the only place I have that's abstained from all appearance of evil home is this place right here. A home, well, you only have one home, but I'm talking about abstaining from all appearance of evil free zone, as you want to say. Is this home right here? I was talking with the Lord when I was sitting on the deck, Brother Says Christ. I was like, why am I always in a rush to get back here? I keep talking about, I want to go to the beach. I want to walk on the beach. We do some gospel tracting. I love pulling out my cue cards and going through scripture. And I talk, I look like a madman just talking to the Lord out loud while I'm walking on the beach. And... I like going to different beaches, and I like going out and doing some things, but every time I go out to do some things, that wicked world, there's the wicked world. I'm like, oh Lord, I didn't really see that. Oh, there's, there's that I didn't want to see either. And you get out there, and it gets to the point where you just, those of us who truly love the Lord, love His Word, we want to stay from, abstain from all the parents of evil, we don't want any temptation, and we go... Like in the stores, I walk by sometimes, I'll see the movies on the stand, like, oh, I didn't want to see that. Walk by the electronics section, they have the big games and everything, because I was, I was addicted to video games. Oh, didn't want to see that. And then I, I asked the Lord, I said, why is that? And the Lord had to tell me, he said, because this is your sanctuary, this is the sanctuary He has given me. He's helped me make this home a Bible-believing, God-fearing home, abstain from all appearance of evil, free home. That's why. And Brother Sister Christ, the world's gotten so wicked, it's almost impossible. There's not one time that I go out, whether it's to shop for food, clothing, walk on the beach and do some gospel tracting. There's not one time that I've ever gone out that I didn't see something that was wicked. Wickedness before my eyes. The Bible says, put no wicked thing before thine eyes. That's how bad the world is today. There is no leaving your home and being able to abstain from the appearance of evil. We need to be praying for one another in these last days. Brothers of Christ, pray, pray, pray that we stay in a standing position. The world's always trying to knock us down. You've got people online that are turning, turning from the truth. And they're starting to serve Satan. Have you ever heard the saying, willingly or unwillingly? Willingly, they're serving Satan. A lot of the lost world. But you can have some brethren that start becoming part of the falling away and unwillingly. In other words, they're not doing it purposely. I'm not setting out to serve Satan. But when you turn your back on that blessed hope and looking for it, you're serving Satan. Right? That end of return of Jesus Christ, you're serving Satan. When you start getting into worldliness, covetousness, idolatry, right? Brothers and sisters of Christ, we need to be praying for him hardcore. That's the whole point of this is to pray, pray, pray. Brothers and sisters of Christ, that's what Paul was praying all the time. He was praying for the brethren night and day with tears because wolves in sheep's clothing, men falling away. Amen. Praying, praying, praying. Brothers, I can't say it enough. We need to be praying for the brethren. And the second part for the brethren as a whole, okay, helping the brethren out in hard times, whether it's spiritually through prayer, 
through encouragement, through throwing script. I told I always tell you, brothers and sisters Christ, the best way to encourage any brother and sister in Christ out there is through the scriptures. Not your feelings and opinions. Not patting them on the back with your feelings and opinions. I, I can't stand people who pat me on the back and say, Don't worry, you'll be great, you'll be just fine. And that's it. I, I like the ones that say, you know what? Don't worry. And they quote scripture. You're sealed into the day of redemption. We're not going to be here that long. Remember that blessed hope. And they link scripture about the blessed hope. Uh, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If you're confessing a fault that you failed the Lord, they throw in there that God is faithful to forgive. But make, they also throw in the verse that talks about uh, where Jesus Christ says, If any man come after me, he must deny himself, pick up his cross daily, and follow me. Make sure you're repenting, forsaking, getting it out of your life, and getting back to your walk with the Lord. And God is faithful to forgive. Those scriptures is how we encourage brethren. But lately it seems that be, that's the only thing we're doing. We're willing to pray. We're willing to throw a few scriptures that way. But what about physically, brother says Christ? When's the last time you physically helped a brother or sister in Christ out? I'm not talking about throwing money at them. That's the third thing, financially. But I'm talking about physically. I wish I had brethren around here that I could go over and help out every now and then. Oh, you need help? I'm here, brother. I'll take some time. To, and while we're, while we're helping out, we can talk about the Lord and His Word. While, we're, while I'm helping out, we can sing a hymn. Keep our eyes on Jesus Christ. Right. And then financially, okay, one of the biggest things is you're being told, just donate to a ministry, just donate to a ministry. It used to be in the Bible, you donate to the brethren as a whole, not just one man. Paul didn't take donations just for me. There was a donation that was for the brethren as a whole, and he got some of that money, absolutely. But it was a donation to the brethren as a whole. When's the last time you helped a brother or sister in Christ out financially? They need a Bible, you buy them a Bible. They need a shirt, you buy them a shirt. They paid their bills and now they're broke. They can't afford food. Do you start hammering them about their bills? Or do you buy them some food and then try to help them go through their bills? Which is it? Oh, you shouldn't have those bills to begin with. You should be able to buy your own. Do you buy them some food and then talk to them about their bills? You help them out first. When's the last time? 2 Corinthians 8.11 2 Corinthians 8.11 Now therefore before the doing of it, that as they were, I'm sorry, uh, that as there was a readiness to will, so there may be a performance also out of that which ye have. For if there be first a willing mind, it is accepted. According to that hath man hath, and not according to that he hath not. For I mean not that other men be eased and ye burdened. I underline that real quick. I'll read it again. For I mean not that other men be eased and ye burdened. Okay, we're not supposed to be, you know, if I can't afford it, I can't afford it. And we're going to get to that point. If I can't afford to help somebody, I can't afford to help somebody. Okay, it's not saying that you have to be burdened now and taking care of people. And there's some brethren in ministry that they like to live at ease why the brethren as a whole is in, is in the state of burden. Be careful about that, okay? We're supposed to be helping the brethren out as a whole, and the whole point, and I'm going to get to it right here, is verse 14, but by an equality, that now at this time your abundance may be a supply for their want. It's talking about abundance. If you have an abundance, share it with the brethren. Help one another out. Not if you're lacking, because we're going to get to that. But if you have an abundance, that be supply for their want, that their abundance also may be a supply for your want. They might be hurt in one area, but be in abundance in another. You might be hurt in one area, and but be in abundance in another. Okay? Help one another out. That there may be equality, as it is written, He that hath gathered much had nothing over. And he that gathered little had no lack. We're sharing with one another. We're helping one another out to get through these wicked days, especially these last days. We're helping one another out. But thanks be to God. Always goes back to God. Thanks be to God, which put the same earnest care in the hearts of Titus for you. The whole attitude of sharing. Blessing, helping one another. Brothers and sisters of Christ, I'm just saying in these last days, 
I'm really wanting to push that. I'm hearing stories. I'm doing my best to help out the brethren as best I can. But I'm not rich. And I understand, Brother Christ, you're not rich. But if we're all helping out whatever little bit we can, helping the brethren out as a whole, it's going to work out. And to God be the glory. Thank God. I don't take credit for it. Thank God that every time he allows me to help a brother and sister in Christ out. Financially. Well, like I said, there's no brethren around here, but there was a brother in Christ, my uncle, um, that when he needed help, I was able to go over and physically help him. It's a two and a half hour drive one way. But I would do that. I'm having a hard time with long distance driving right now, but I'd do that. And, I, and it helped. It, 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 I'm not trying to take credit for it to God be the glory, but it's a good feeling to help a brother and sister Christ out physically. Okay? It's one thing to just throw money at them, but it's another thing to be able to physically help them out. Okay. 2 Corinthians 9, 7 says, Every man according as he hath purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. We should have a giving heart, period, yes. But we should not be giving grudgingly or of out of necessity. And one of the three, just real quick, one of the three things, tactics, beware of, of men in the Babel buildings, uh, it used to be television evangelists, but now it's kind of moved over to the internet, YouTube evangelists, people in ministries, supposed ministries online. Be careful of their tactics. One of the tactics they do is bribing. They'll try to bribe you. You say, what are you talking about? If you donate to this ministry, the rewards I get will redound to you. But they don't do the whole truth. Okay. Yes, if you're donating to ministries that are trying to get the gospel out in a broader way than when you are, will you get rewards for that? Absolutely. But they also make it out like everything they do, their rewards will come to you and you'll get the same rewards. That's a lie. That's a total lie. There's so many PWCs, Brother Sister Christ, PWCs, Polly Want a Cracker. They'll pair it with some guy says behind uh, the camera. That's a camera period, but in the TV, the Babel buildings, okay, uh, online, okay, they'll pair it with that man says, and they'll quote the same scriptures that man says, but they couldn't figure it out to save their life, because all they're doing is parroting what that man says. Okay. Why? And they think that throwing money at him, throwing money at him, I'll get the same rewards. He can do all the Bible reading for me. He can do all the Bible studying for me. He can do all the prayer for me. He can do all the uh, witnessing for me. And I'll just throw money at him. Because he said every, that the rewards he gets will redound to you. That's a lie. That's a lie. It's a half-truth. It's not the whole truth. The truth of the matter is, brothers and Christ, you need to be out there reading the Bible. You need to be praying. You need to be studying the Bible. You need to be witnessing for Jesus Christ. You need to be hiding God's Word in your heart. When someone does a teaching, you need to go through the Bible and check the Scriptures to see if these things are so. Not just taking His Word for it. Okay? So one of the traps they do with the lost world, you see it with these big TV evangelists and the Babel buildings, the reason people throw money at them and they make so much money is because they're deceived into thinking that I can throw money at them and they can do all the work. They can do all the work. That's the first trick. The second trick is um, guilt trip. They'll guilt trip people. Oh, we're just barely being able to pay the bills here. We need more donations and... And, you know, we need this much amount of money to get back on top. And, and you know, then you look at them and they got multi-million dollar buildings, multi-million dollar planes for the TV evangelists. You're looking at these guys behind the pulpit and they're living it up. They're living a lifestyle up here while the people donating are living a lifestyle down here. Be careful about that. They should be living with you guys. If they're living up here and you're living down here. I'm talking about financially. Be careful. But they'll try to do some kind of guilt tripping. Oh, poor me. Poor me. We're just so poor. We're just barely getting, getting by. So that's guilt tripping. And the third one I've seen them use, Brother Sister Christ, when it comes to giving, to do, uh, donating to ministries, the third one is, is bullying. Bullying. They'll bully you into donations. 
How many of you have heard them read this verse here where it says, For every man according to his purpose in his heart, let him give, not grudgingly, and not of necessity. Necessity. And then you turn around and you listen and say, But you should be giving to some donate. You should be donating to some ministry. Should. That's the key word. Should be donated. Wait, 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 wait. You just read this verse that said it's not a necessity. Now you're making it a necessity. That's not the bullying part. I just wanted to throw that in there. Be careful. Okay, be careful. They're always trying to push at these Babel buildings, uh, TV advantages. You should be given to some ministry. Uh, no, that becomes a necessity. You're supposed to be given out of a cheerful heart. When God puts it on your heart to help this person out, that person in ministry, help this brother and sister in Christ out over here, help that brother and sister in Christ out over there that aren't in ministry, to help the brethren as a whole when God puts it on your heart, to help the body of Christ as a whole. Help them. Okay, you should have a, a giving spirit when you have abundance. You should have that giving spirit. That should be there. Absolutely. But getting back to the bullying part, here's how they'll bully you. If I don't get enough donations, I'm going to quit the ministry and get a secular job. How many of you have heard men say that? If we don't get enough donations, we're going to have to quit the work of God. The work of God is going to cease. and Everything's going to fail. That's bullying. They're now trying to bully you into donations. Oh yeah, I've seen all three tra tactics used, Brother Sister Christ. Be very, very careful. Mainly it's the Babel buildings that use it, but now I'm seeing some brethren online use it. Be careful. Yes, it's nothing wrong with asking for donations. Hey, we need food and raiment. Roof over our head, singular, food and raiment. By all means, if you're seriously hurting, ask for some donations. If you're in ministry, I understand. I understand. Full-time ministry. Real full-time ministry. But brothers and sisters in Christ, we need to be given to the body of Christ as a whole. I'll say it again. You're always willing to pray for us, which is what this is all studies about. Praise the Lord that you're praying for the body of Christ. But what's the last time you gave your time to the body of Christ? I've had brethren that have taken time to Skype with me and listen to me vent about my frustrations about this world, ministry, you know, the attacks that I'm getting. Um, did I get to vent a little bit? And I, I talked to him. I said, you know what? You didn't have to listen to me vent. That was, I just... And then they started encouraging me with Scripture. They started encouraging me with the Word of God. Focus. Don't take your eyes off Jesus Christ. Get your eyes back on Jesus Christ. There's times that I talk to them about problem, physical problems that I'm having around the house. Right now, I've got a... Uh, one of my prayer requests personally is i got a bobcat that's killed four of my hens. I'm, I went from... Total, I went from ten... I lost two to the mites, two hens to mites, and now I've lost four hens to uh, this bobcat and one of my baby chickens. And I'm down to four egg-laying hens, and now I've got five, six, six hens, babies that are coming up. They're going to get me back to my number of ten. I always try to keep up to ten, and I've got my one rooster. But I ask them, well, I've tried this, I've tried that, and they take time out to help me with something. Even if it's just on Skype, just if it's on an email, because we're so spread out. How, how, when's the last time you took time for the body of Christ? That you took time for a brother or sister in Christ? Or are you so fixated on your own life and, your own, and the world around you? There's times I'm sitting out here, I think of the brethren all the time when I eat. I pray the brethren are eating as good as I am. Now, I'm living off uh, bear meat. I tell about this. I live off bear meat. Uh... I went on a tuna trip that I have so much tuna in there that we were able to can. It'll last like three or four years in the cans. Um, okay, you got to do the study on that. There's food in cans that even though they've lost their color, they're not poisonous. You can still eat it, but they've lost a lot of the um, vitamins and the minerals. So even though they could last up to four years, I've been told two years is, the, is, the, is the, really the mark for those, those jars. Um, but I live off the tuna. I went on a tuna trip with the fishing club that I joined to learn about all the fishing around here. Right. And I'm trying to think what else. Oh, the regular fish. I got a little kayak that I'm, my back's been hurting me lately, but when a, a bunch of the neighbors, they're lost. I've witnessed to them, but I don't like going out alone because I'm not experienced. I'm still not wouldn't consider myself an experienced, but we go out on kayaks on the ocean on calm days, 
and we fish for cod. And we can get six or seven codfish, and each fish will last me three or four meals. Praise the Lord. Okay, I'm living off this stuff, but the Lord has provided around you. And my, my advice to the brethren is look around you and find ways to provide for, uh, to grow food. Garden, I'm pointing out at my garden right now. Grow food, hunting, fishing. Okay, I was blessed. I don't have to hunt bear. Out here we have a place down there that has to do with the logging company. And um, the way it sets up is they've got these trees and they've got this area that they have fenced off, but bears still find their way in. They'll tag the bear and they'll relocate them. And if the bear comes back and it's a new fresh bear, they'll just tag him, relocate him. But if he comes back the second time and he's got that tag, they'll call up uh, people that have hunting license for bears. Do you want bear meat? And I'm like, that's such a blessing. With my back and my legs, I'm not that much of a hunter. It's such a blessing. I'll put my name on the list, say, give me a call. And it's... It's still heavy, still a lot of work, but the point is, is God will provide ways to feed you. You have to keep your eyes on Him. You ever hear the saying, keep your eyes open? you got to keep your eyes on Him and trusting Him. Don't just be someone who sits there and is lazy. I know the Bible says that the man, um, if a man doesn't work, neither shall he eat. We're supposed to be working with our hands. Absolutely, brother says Christ. And it takes a lot of work to butcher a bear. But the point is, we're supposed to keep our eyes on Jesus and God will open doors around us to provide for us. And when times are hard and some of us have abundance, we're supposed to be sharing with those who don't have an abundance. So in the end, in the end, they got food and raiment, we have food and raiment. They have what they need, we have what we need. Sometimes they can have what they want, we can have what we want. Okay? In these last days, brothers and Christ, I'm pushing this as hard as I can. When's the last time you spent physical time, uh, your physical time helping a brother and sister in Christ out? Some people have a lot of money, so they think they can just throw money and that's all they have to do. Uh, no, you need to be praying. The spiritual. You need to be praying for them. You need to be encouraging each other through the Word of God. Then you have the physical. Are you giving your time to the body of Christ? Helping brothers and sisters in Christ out. Some people have a lot of money and they're, they're, they're fine in the money department and the donation department, but they're hurting in the physical department and the spiritual department when it comes to helping the body of Christ out. Some people are poor and they do a lot of prayer and encouraging with the scriptures, but they, they're, they won't take time out for the brethren. Make sure you're strong in all three areas as best you can. I know we're in the last days, brothers and Christ, and we're all spread out, but if a brother needs to talk... Spend some time talking with the brother in Christ. Okay? Listen to him. Encourage him through the scriptures, but take some time to listen to him. Uh, if you have some expertise, take some time to help the brethren out with your expertise that God has blessed you with. Electrician, plumber, mechanic. Okay, Help one another out, brothers and sisters in Christ. Help one another out. So I didn't mean for this to be a long video, but it is. So it's, that's how it happens when you love the Word of God and you're trying to get the truth out there. It takes time to get the truth out there. There's no such thing as fast food Christianity. Although they try to, they, I'm sorry, there is such thing as fast food fake Christianity, false religion. But when it comes to absolute truth in the Word of God, there's no such thing as fast food studies, fast food videos. Okay. So let's get to the personal requests. So those are my main requests for all of them. I'll go over them one more time. Okay, that we pray hardcore for the brethren that they stay in a standing position, that they keep their eyes on Jesus Christ. And if they've fallen, we can encourage them through the scriptures to get back up on their feet, to repent, forsake, and get back to your walk with the Lord. Take if you lost if you lost focus with the world, we pray for them and encourage them through the scriptures to get back to looking for Jesus Christ every day with the life that you're living. That's the first big request. The second request is that we're helping the brethren as a whole. Okay? Financially, spiritually, in prayer, and encouragement through the scriptures, physically, and financially. That we're helping everybody out. Don't be falling into the trap where I have to donate just to this one ministry and I'm good to go. And I'm donating to one man. Okay? No, make sure you're helping the brethren out as a whole. We're helping everybody out. Now, my personal request, one of the big ones, right, even right now, standing in one position for this long, 
my knees, you see me moving a little bit in the, in the video as I'm talking. It's not because I have, uh, what's it called, ADD or whatever, where someone's like, I can't sit still, I can't sit still. I could stand still. It's my knees that are hurting and I have to keep moving a little bit to kind of move the joints of my knees and you'll see me go side to side a little bit when I try to do standing preaching. So one of my pr prayer requests, uh, personal prayer requests, is for my health when it comes to my knees. I love my walking with the Lord and talking with the Lord. I pray on everything. Sitting out there, I pray. I pray when I'm working. I pray when I go for walks, but I do love my walks. I do love sitting outside. And sometimes I, I used to love standing outside on the deck. For some reason, God designed that deck that if I'm standing up, that two feet distance going up, it opens everything up and it looks so much beautiful or just be able to stand up. But then when I sit down, I lose that two feet and a lot of things get covered up and it's like you miss out on stuff. It's like, uh, so I like to stand, but I can't stand that long anymore. I'm thinking of getting one of those uh, tables and chairs that are uh, like a, they call them a bar stool, but I'm not for bars, but the chairs that are left, lifted up and the tables lifted up for the table that I'm, I'm keeping my eyes open for a used one. Um, but um, there's that. My knees, you know, prayer for my knees. That's one of my biggest things. I just, if I can't walk, I can't walk. I'm going to still serve the Lord with all my heart, no matter what. You know, like I said earlier, if I don't get enough donations, I'm going to quit the ministry. If you don't get enough donations, you continue doing the ministry and you get a secular job. If that's what God calls you to do, you get your secular job and you continue preaching the truth. That's what Paul did. When he was a tent maker, he was preaching in the synagogues every Sabbath day. He was preaching to the Gentiles when the, when the opportunity presented itself. He was still doing the work of the Lord while he was a tent maker. I think it was three to five years. Okay. Uh, if I can't walk, I'm not gonna, it's not going to stop me from praising the Lord and giving God thanks in all things and doing the work of the Lord, staying in His Word and trying to preach it. But I really will miss being able to walk if I get to that point where I can't walk. My knees get bad. But right now I need prayer for my knees. Brother says Christ, prayer for my knees. Uh, the second prayer I mentioned always, I'm putting over here to the chicken coop. I can see a little bit of outside the window here. Um, the bobcat. I, I need prayer. I've been praying hardcore for it. I have a special trap out there. And everyone keeps telling me, this works, this works. I've seen the bobcat walk up to the trap. And he walks around the trap and he tries to go in. It's called a live trap for a bobcat. So there's a box that the chicken goes in. Then the cage goes in the front. And so he walks into the cage thinking he can get to the chicken, but he can't, and the cage catches him. But he tries to ignore the cage, and he goes around and tries to dig a hole through the, rock, to, to the box trying to get to that chicken. He's, it just seems like this is a smart bobcat. And I desperately, desperately need prayer, brother, sister, Christ. I can't let the chickens out anymore unless I'm sitting out there. I spend like every two to three days, I spend two hours listening to Alexander Scorvey setting out there to let the chickens roam and do their dust baths and everything because they need to do their dust baths because of the, the mites and everything. Um, but I need prayer for that. Prayer for my knees, prayer for that. Those are my two biggest prayers. And I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, Brother and Sister Christ. Thank you, thank you for your prayers. I thank that Brother and Sister in Christ. It was, it was a couple months ago. Uh, for the package that they sent. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. I do. I, pre I appreciate the emails. I appreciate the letters. The encouragement that you give me, brothers and sisters, through the Word of God. I appreciate it. And there's some days where I'm sitting there and I think, all's for naught. You know how you... Uh, I don't want this video to go too long, but you know how you can get depressed? And when you get depressed, you start getting negative. I'm, I'm, not, I, I'm ashamed of it, but I'm not ashamed to confess it to the brethren. I've done that. I've gotten depressed where I start getting negative, and I'm starting to sit there saying, what's the point, Lord? What's the point in these last days? Uh, I try to put out studies online and, you know, this and that. and Is it really doing anything, Lord? And the next thing I know, I get a letter from a brother or sister in Christ that said, this study helped them with their life, their walk with the Lord. This... This video over here encouraged them to go out and witness for Jesus Christ. And they thank the Lord that He's using me. And the Bible says that know that your work is not in vain. And they encourage me with verses. They encourage me. And I'm like, I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry for getting down. I get, even I get distracted by this world, brother, sister, Christ. I am not perfect. 
I can take my eyes off Jesus Christ and start looking at the world, how wicked it is and everything, and I can start getting down, and I start getting negative and everything. And, but I thank the brethren for their prayers. I desperately thank you for your prayers, brothers and sisters of Christ. I thank you for your support okay, and prayer. I thank the brethren for their support that have been encouraging me through Skype and through emails. I thank you, I thank you, thank you, Brother Sister Christ. And financially, once again, why don't I take donations? God has provided food and raiment for me, Brother Sister Christ, through retirement. I have a retirement. God has, has blessed me. If times get hard and they take my retirement away because I won't take the, the mark, there is no mark while we're here. I'm talking about the smart money system. Or taking that, that jab if you know what I'm talking about. If you don't do this, you don't do that, we're going to take away your retirement. Then there might come a time. I'm not too... It's not a pride thing. I just want to throw out there. It's not a pride thing, brothers and Christ, that I don't take donations as a whole. I took some donations when times were hard, and brethren helped me. I'm pointing at the camera. Brethren helped me get this camera. Thank you, brothers and sisters of Christ. I'm not... I'm trying so hard not to be prideful about it. And humble myself. When I'm in need, I'll ask for help. When you're in need, brother, says Christ, ask for help. I have an email. There's other ministries that have emails. Ask for help, brother, says Christ. Okay? But I don't ask for donations because God provided food and raiment for me. Okay? That whole verse, I don't want to go into it too much, but that whole verse that you see a lot of people in ministry, mainly the battle buildings and everything, if a man provide not for his own, he's worse than an infidel. And the laborer is worthy. Thou shalt not muzzle the ox, and the laborer is worthy of his reward. When you get into full-time ministry, you've got to rely on God to take care of you. God will provide through you through some donations. The body of Christ provides for men like that. They're not providing for themselves. The body of Christ is. And that's how it's supposed to be. Okay? That's how it's supposed to be. But if God's already providing the food and raiment... I'm, gonna, I'm not taking money from brethren that are having a hard time doing food and raiment, okay? I'm, I'm always pointing at you, brother, says Christ, saying, help the brethren out. God's got me taken care of. Help a brother and sister in Christ out that's hurting. Buy some Bibles for people. Buy a box of gospel tracts and go out and do some gospel tracting, okay? Help brethren with, you know, food and raiment. Help each other out, okay? I don't take donations because God's provided for me. And the way things are right now, God's provided me, I, I'm good. So I thank the brethren, because I've had brethren hit me up saying, I want to donate, but how do I donate? And I let them know that, hey, buy some gospel tracts and go give them out. Buy some Bibles to hand out to people who want Bibles. Not just hand, you don't hand out Bibles like gospel tracts, you hand out Bibles to people who want one. Um, uh, you hand out gospel tracts where they want it or not, you try to give it to them. Okay, trust me, you know, you want this gospel tract. Your eternity is important. There is a heaven and there is a hell. Your eternity is important. Okay, uh, help some of the brethren out. If, you got, if you're in one of those brethren that have an abundance, make sure you're helping the brethren out with food and raiment. Uh, some of them are having hard times with bills. If you can help them pay a power bill, help a brother or sister in Christ out. Okay, we're supposed to be here to help one another out. Okay. Um, but that's it. I'm not going to go any further than that. I, that's my two per, personal prayer requests for me. My knees and the bobcat. The two biggest things right now. Uh, and I've, I was about to say patience and uh, focus, but we've already prayed about that. Keeping our eyes on Jesus Christ. It starts with me and goes out to everybody else. I pray to the Lord for me, and then I pray for everyone else. I want you to pray for you, brother says Christ, and then pray for everyone else. So I'm going to end this with grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching and thank you, thank you, thank you brothers and sisters Christ for all the support and for all that you do for the body of Christ as a whole, what I don't see and what you do for the body of body of Christ that I do see. I just want to thank you and keep standing brothers and sisters Christ, keep standing. We're almost there. Jesus Christ can come back any day now. How's your walk with the Lord? So I'll say it again. Grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And my love for you which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.